All right, guys, so here I'm going to show you how to do normals. And we're not going to do the normals generated through 3D for this particular example, but we're going to do 2D. And believe it or not, 2D, you can actually get away with some cool stuff. I'm going to grab some wires real quick here and tweak them out. Um, versus 3D. Now, 3D, you can sometimes get a really nice silhouette if you uh, know what you're doing with your model. Or if you know your texture really well and you know exactly how your model is supposed to be represented, you can use uh, so such software as Endo and Crazy Bump. But uh, you really have to pay attention where you're placing everything and how things are looking. So what I'm doing here is I'm doing, I'm being an art director and I'm grabbing some of these verts and pushing them over because I don't know why it kind of bugs me. So we're going to push this over here. Slight warping on my texture, but nothing to write home about. All right, so we got this guy here. This is a little modulated piece that I made for UDK, little uh, ones that can be put into a space, uh, spaceship. So what we're going to do is we're going to apply a normal. We're going to create a normal using the texture, and we're going to apply the normal to the object. And I'm going to show you how to do that. And I'm also going to explain to you what normals are. Now, um, if you look at an object that has a normal or a BMP, you'll see there is a little bit of a difference between them. Now, um, excuse me, I shouldn't say BMP, a bump map. Now, a bump map in 3D allows an object to appear as if it has three-dimensional qualities to it, but it really doesn't because it's only using black and white information. A normal map uses RGB, red, green, and blue information. And hence, it tries to simulate 3D, and it's mapped on the normals of each piece of your object. Now, if you don't know what normals are, if you go to your display, and we're going to go to our uh, polygons, custom polygon display, so we can control the size. We can click on normals, and we can click on normal size here. And you'll see all these polys point in a direction. You'll see a little arrow in the middle of them that shows where each one of these polygon normals are facing. Now, when you map a normal map on an object, it takes those faces into account and it calculates that texture and displays that texture in such a way so when you move the object around that those faces are evenly calculated so they look like they're pointing at you in a consistent manner. Um, and this was developed by uh, Tiger Studios, which was Vin Diesel's company, and uh, another one called Synergy, I believe, I forget, and that was for Chronicles of Riddick. It was one of the first games to actually use normal maps, and it's used to fool the eye to make something look like it has more polys than it actually does. Bump map is just a more dumbed-down version of that, which isn't as robust, and only uses black and white information, so black, white, and a little bit of gray, but you'll see at certain angles it still looks flat. All right, just wanted to explain that real quick. So we got our object here. So what we're going to do is we're going to use Crazy Bump. Let's see, you see I have Endo. We can go through that one later in another uh, another tutorial. <coughs> There's Crazy Bump. We're going to activate this guy. He's pretty simple to use. I'm going to run down some of the simplicity with him and some of the editing that you can do when you run into problems with seams on UV shells. So I'm going to click on this button, open it up, we'll grab, open up a file, and in this case we can grab, huh, you know, we'll grab some wires. We're going to make a normal map later on for him anyway, but we're not going to grab the normal map, we're going to actually want to grab his existing texture to make the normal map. So let's see where his existing texture, oh, there it is, right, right next to his, right next to him. So I say open, crazy pup is thinking, puny humans will be instructed to wait. And typically, I'll grab the one on the right. Now, um, the reason why is this a little bit of an optical illusion. The one on the left usually is pushed in. The one on the right is uh, actually a more accurate silhouette. I've been wrong sometimes, um, forgetting exactly what my uh, texture looks like. But uh, we're going to select the shape. And you can always change it. You can always invert it if you need to. Look at that. Cool. It's actually not too bad. It's kind of what I was going for. Nice, so I can hit the right mouse button and I can change the lighting to look at my normal map. You can also load the mesh into here. I don't have an OBJ ready, so we're not going to do that for this example. I'm going to hit box right there. And uh, you can see an example of how it lays down on the object. This is actually pretty good. You can use the wheel mouse button to zoom in close. Not too shabby. All right. You can leave that constantly open or close it. And when you do, it, it says, hey, do you want to pull it back up again? We have intensity. Now, intensity can go negative, so you can invert this if you want it. 
I'm going to keep it the way that it was because it was actually not too shabby. And uh, you can mess with the sharpen here. I actually use sharpen a lot. Um, probably a little too high there, so we'll keep it middle range. It all depends how much noise. Sharpen will highlight any extra um, information on the object, but there's also noise removal, which actually can remove some of the erroneous noise, and it's very slight. Um, if you magnify, you can actually see those uh, actually changing as you move things around. And some of this is ambiguous. We see I have a very fine detail, fine detail, medium detail, and it really does change the detail. And what it does, it picks through through the highest to lowest of the detail that you have in your scene and highlights them. And I'm not sure how it separates those levels, but it does categorize them so that when you do mess with these sliders, you will see some results for sure. All right, cool. I think that's about it for now. It's a little bit noisy, but that's fine. You can right click, hit save. You can save all your textures. It'll create a displacement, occlusion, speculating, and diffuse. And we'll get into those later and what they are. Displacement, you can say though, I do want to cover this one. Um, he's kind of a hardcore normal map. He actually does change the silhouette. He is not an optical illusion. They're considered pretty heavy, so just be careful if you ever use it. Also, um, video games are trying to implement this more and more. I know the Crytek engine right now is using displacement map type of information for uh, changing of an object and tessellation. So what we're doing now is we're going to actually save our normals to file. When you do it, I like to keep my uh, quality at 100. Um, mode baseline is fine. You can actually change a little bit of that. Um, but this is just basically uh, for a quality control. Baseline should be just dandy. Uh, did I just say dandy? I did. All right, so let's go down here, and everything else is good to go. I think we're good. And uh, we'll do this color, and we'll do demo two. Try not to sneeze right now. And we'll hit. <coughs> Excuse me. Let's save. That's a first. Um, Let's save now. All right. And uh, actually, what I'm going to do too, oh, I'll just leave it for now. That's fine. Let's go and close them out. Boop, boop. Now that he's saved, he's fine. And uh, so we got our object here. And let's pull up in Photoshop real quick. I'm going to show you some stuff here. This is me demonstrating a bump map here. Let me minimize him. And let's open up what we just made. Demo 2. It's got a lot more noise than the original. Um, now, what you can do, you'll notice each one of my UV shells seem to have a, uh, a seam that I may not want. And that's the only downside when using a Crazy Bump. It'll make these weird seams. So what you can do to prevent that or lessen that effect, we can actually go in here and I can select these regions. And let's grow our selection. We go select um, you can literally grow it this way if you wanted, or you can just go to uh, oh, cancel. Let me do undo. Uh, history, history, history. Where's my history at? Oh, there we go. And um, we'll go in here, and instead we'll go to select, and we'll go to modify, so we can actually expand it a little bit, three pixels if you want, and uh, do it again, expand. Open that up, and then this time we'll do uh, six, twice as much. So with that selected, and I don't want that seam to be so harsh, you can actually go in here, and you can fill. And when you fill, you set content aware. And when you do so, what happens is that Photoshop looks at all the variables of the different shapes and the consistent ones, and will fill it in. And the nice thing about this, it'll actually remove the seam. Look at that nicely remove that seam that shows up between your UV shells. Now if you don't know what the UV shells are, um, just fire me an email or actually just message me on YouTube and I'll make one. I am going to make one pretty soon. The files that I do have are S, uh, SWF and I can't seem to convert them so I will be making new lecture videos on that. And we'll do this again. Let's go and select this area. And uh, we'll increase our selection. Actually, I'll just select this. And we'll go to our uh, select. And we'll go to modify. 
and we'll go to expand again do six there we go pretty good and again I'll just do a little bit a little bit of editing here there we go and we'll go to edit fill and we'll do content aware look at that and it like removes the seams really nicely content aware is like the best invention pretty cool all right so now that we got that I'm gonna save him save let's go to our view here and uh, now this guy here this is the body this is the one we can load later and I can show you and this one is the wires the circuit board so let's go to the body one because I already have the body one built so let's go to bump mapping this is where you would need to load the normal map go to file underneath bump um, bump value you want to load our normal map so let's go and grab one that we already have made in this case we'll do this guy open oh looks like he didn't like him that's okay that does happen sometimes let's go and shuffle through right connection and do it again and we'll grab there you go sample there we go likes him I'm not sure why I didn't like that other guy but now that we have him loaded you notice we can't quite see it so what we can do is one we do need to go to tangent space normals and to view it in the port you want to go to high quality mode you'll see him show up Unfortunately, when you notice you lower this, it won't update, which is kind of annoying. Um, even when you switch it to Viewport 2.0, you'll notice it still won't update. And Viewport 2.0 will actually turn them off. And you're like, where did they go? They are not displayed accurately and won't show up, which kind of sucks. So we'll just go to our regular um, high quality mode. So what you can do to actually get them to, to preview correctly, I'm going to pull up a thing called IPR and my renderer, I'm just going to actually bump up my renderer a little bit because it's really small right now. So let's go, ah, and decided to switch on me with my hotbox. Let's just go to our render editor instead. Render, test resolution, it's at 50%. Let's make it do 100. And um, when it renders, we can use IPR, and I can select this and the cool thing is as I change the depth it'll update so I'm going to go higher or lower and it's pretty cool so I can test that out on the fly whether I like the results that I'm getting maybe just a little bit subtle right there actually pretty cool not too bad so with that guy in play we can now load the other one you watch me do this again go to the circuit box go to the bump map go to the file go to the same area bump value grab the file let's grab the one that we made um, there he is demo 2 this guy's a little bit noisier Oy, he looks gross and uh, looks like old lady legs so what we'll do is switch sets this to tangent space normal and uh, and you'll see again it goes to this default kind of weird looking shape so what we can do is do the IPR again and um, select the region and oh, hopefully I don't have too much of an error there so we'll go in here and I can now lower it or increase it oh looks like we IF little IFF problem there it's like no I don't like you oh, so what we can do to fix that we'll close IPR it does crash sometimes we'll break connection and we'll load it again and this time we'll just grab an older one um, give us less trouble TIFF or targets are always better but in this case I just made JPEGs um, let's go to the old one here open him up and uh, we'll flip through this and uh, we'll open up IPR there we go and um, we'll select a region and I can lower this you'll see it lower and raise pretty cool huh pretty nifty kids pretty cool so if you do have trouble with that where Maya's airing out just do a TIFF or Targa they're the, they're the best bet every once in a while Maya will say no I did not want to do 
um, um, anything but um, it'll say like I don't want to do TIFFs, I don't want to do targets or PNGs or JPEGs. It it just does it randomly. It's something you can't really control. Um, there are scripts that actually can help that, but overall you can't really stop that from from happening. All right, so hopefully you guys enjoyed that. How to apply a normal map to this uh, little generic object I got here, but the basics are there so you can understand how to get that going. Cool. Later on, the next few months, though, we'll be implementing some more advanced stuff because I'm going to be texturing characters using Mudbox. And I hope you enjoy this video.